It's rare I stand in front of a car, but here it is, the G90, it's been refreshed. And just have a good, strong look at it like you have been in the intro. It's bigger than life. It screams, I have more money than you. I have a better lifestyle than you. I have more lovers than you. And then you take a look at the front end. This is Genesis's new fascia headlights, grilly. The grill is enormous. It's bigger than it's ever been. Look at the wheels. It's straight out of an 80s luxury car movie. Good luck cleaning those, by the way. I'm gonna pay somebody to clean these things because I can't be bothered. And the main thing is, you wanna look at this, you wanna impress people, and that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to get attention. Let's see if the interior matches the exterior. I'm back in the Genesis G90. The last time I rode in here was with my ex-girlfriend, Sung Kim. We went for Korean barbecue. She threw meatballs in my mouth for the first time and they went in so easy, so slowly. And that's exactly how I would describe the experience of the G90. Everything's smooth, slow. It's life in the calm lane. Every surface of this car that you interact with, on the interior at least, is soft to the touch. And it's remarkable when you take a look at the price. The executive class vehicles in America are disappearing and they're not all that popular because they are so damn expensive. This, like most Hyundai and Kia branded things and now in Genesis, it is a value for what you get and that's why you really appreciate this. Let's get into some of the pros and cons of the interior before we move into the shop. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. If you've been in plenty of vehicles, you're gonna notice something about this Genesis. It's kind of the previous generation. This is an older design that they've tried to kind of refresh. However, Hyundai and Kia have taken all the good things and all the innovations that they made in the Genesis brand and they put it in things like the Telluride or the Palisade. And basically everything that you see in here has been lifted to those cars. And what it's done is it's devalued what makes the Genesis unique and special. And if you're somebody that's looking for a luxury car, you want something more bespoke. And I don't feel that way. Right down to the gauge cluster. It's like something that you would find in a base Sonata or an Elantra. And, you know, that may not bother some people, but it's a counterpoint to all the great things about this. Now, that doesn't mean that's completely negative. When you look at the piping on the upper dash and the stitching, there's this mathematical pre precision to it, like it was all machine done. And there's no panel gaps, there's nothing weird about anything, everything, the fit and finish is great, the feel of everything's good, and when you shut the door, you're in an isolation chamber. Look at the size of this door. This is bigger than some of the cars I've owned. And when you get back here, let's get, let's get real, this is what this car is about. If you are driving it, you're probably doing it wrong. Not that it's a bad experience, but this is where it's at. You can. Just get real loose. In fact, I'd probably hire somebody to massage me in the back seat. You have the electronic peasant shades that go up and down with the switch. You don't have to pull them up. You have a huge center armrest. Holy Christ, I'm gonna throw out my back lifting this up. But all the electronics, it's got wood on it. And this is how you control the HVAC, the seat heaters, the seat adjustment. You can recline, you can move shit around back here. And then you have these jewel LED reading lights on the center dome area, which is a nice touch. I mean, everything in here is just so wonderful. Enough of that. You gotta get in this car, I'm telling you. I'm gonna talk about the audio system and the final thoughts, but you just have to get in this and appreciate it, find out if it's for you. Let's get this on the lift and take a look at the underbody.
I'm not going to put you to sleep covering the underneath of the Genesis G90 for very long. I've already done a video on this car and the G80. If you want a crash course, watch those videos. But I will talk about a few things. One, this is the most high-end product that Hyundai and Kia have put together. It's also one of the most simplistic at the same time. And Albert Bierman talked about this, why they don't have air suspension, why they don't have aluminum subframes and exotic materials all underneath this. And it is because they want to make it easier to service and it does reduce cost. But that doesn't mean that it sacrifices anything in ride quality. This is also one of the few products that they have a multi-link front. It resembles a double wishbone, but you have two split lower control arms that go into massive ball joints. You have split upper A-arm design. This gives them more flexibility in terms of tuning for toe changes under compression, lateral load, camber change under compression, and you have forged aluminum components in the knuckle, the control arms, but everything else under here is steel, including the subframes, front and rear. Now this car is so covered up, and this is the all-wheel drive architecture, or all-wheel drive platform. It's rear-wheel drive first, so you can buy this as a rear-wheel drive car, much like the G80, and then they tack on all-wheel drive to it. So in the back, you're gonna see the differential, you're gonna see the drive shaft and all the suspension components, but if you wanna get the most rear, rear bias driving experience, you have to go into sport mode. It will transfer more torque and power to the back that way. Otherwise, when you're driving in comfort, it tends to feel a little bit more front, front wheel drive-ish. It will push, but again, this is a rear wheel drive platform first. The next thing to talk about is the eight speed automatic. With the all wheel drive configuration, the computer and the ECU control is set up to be very conservative. Softer shifts, smoother shifts, if you pull a paddle, they are slow to respond. The most aggressive tuning for it, you have to put it in sport mode and you have to turn traction and stability control off for the transmission to be able to hold revs when you're, when you're manually controlling the transmission. It will hit the fuel cutoff and the trans shifting speed also speeds up. But you, again, you have to turn off traction and stability control to do that to get the full experience, which on the G90 is absolutely pointless. But let's get this on the road and we'll talk about some of the driving characteristics and what it's like to ride in this car. So, sir. Hey! Shut the f up! I'm on the phone! Yeah. Flood Kenya with Super Bowl 37 t shirts. I'm down on cash. Do it now! So, sir, how do you enjoy the G90 from the back seat? Yeah, these window shades are electronic and keep these people out of here. I like it. I like that. I'll tell you that much. I like the room and the space I get back here. It is extremely quiet, so I can make my business deals. What is happening? Uh, I thought I told you to call ahead and tell them to not do this. It's the poor, sir. I can't keep them away from your final destination, the burger zone. I need to go to the burger zone now. Not oh, yesterday, now. He's getting out of the way, look at this. Now we're talking. Now, where was I? You were telling me about the refinement you get in this vehicle. I don't really care. The refinement's great. It's super quiet. The main thing is, and I'm going to make this point now so I can let you tell me everything. This lacks all the high-end features that things like the A8, the 7 Series, the S-Class have. For instance, I don't have a separate blower motor for my eight HVAC controls in the back. I can turn them on, but it uses the front motors where you're sitting. So I can't really have my own zone truly without you having yours on, which is super annoying. The second thing is I don't have seat massagers back here and I don't care what you say. If I'm going to recline, I want to get massaged in a car like this in the back seat. And that's something that every other brand has. Uh, I don't have a wine chiller. I don't have a, a stripper pole or customizable LED lighting. My uh, jewel LEDs can't be refocused like in the Audi. There's all these little things that add up that I feel like I understand why they're not here, but it annoys me. From the back seat. From the front seat though, as a potential owner, what you get in this that you don't get in many of the other cars in this segment is a value. You know, 
a value proposition or value buy in an executive saloon is almost unheard of, right? This gets 99% of the luxury that an A8, an S-Class, a 7 Series has, but you're not paying through the nose. As the owner of Burgerville, do you think I really care about value in the executive class segment? Do you really think I'm trying to penny pinch on my lease? No, but as someone who might be looking to get into this segment, that's what the Genesis offers. You know, you get a car that rides exceptionally well in all three of its driving modes, right? It, it doesn't have air ride, but yet its traditional dampers work really, really well. It has a very adequate powertrain while I don't love the 3.3 liter in this car, I think the 5 liter offering makes more sense, particularly in how this thing delivers power. There's a lot of delay down low, and if you're not already up to speed, you lack some of that immediacy of power that you're expecting in a car like this. But you know, it delivers reasonable fuel economy. There are other offerings available. And I mean, you spent a lot more time in the G80 than I did. What did you think of that motor? Um, so I have high, high. Uh I love the G80. That's all I'm going to say. I've said it right from the beginning. That was the turnaround for Hyundai, Kia, and the Genesis brand. The body structure with the, this is shared on. It's just a long wheelbase version of it. Everything about that car is great in here. This is just bigger, more luxurious, and it also needs a V8. Not because it's faster. Not because it's better. It just suits the character more with the, the subtle vibration, the, the calming aspect of it, and the smoothness that you get out of it. That It's not that the twin turbo doesn't have it, it just doesn't feel as good to me. So if you're gonna get this, definitely out for the V8. Yeah, hey, here, let me demonstrate. It's not slow. It just doesn't have that effortless uh -huh, you're expecting from a car like this. It's missing kind of the, it's just missing the overall refinement of the V8. That, that's really all it is. But okay, you know, you can talk about the motors. The transmission is super smooth. It's tuned on the smoother side. They've got a, a magical ride in here, like you said, without having to go to high-end solutions or super expensive solutions. They've made the interior, the NVH low. There's a lot to, to like in here for the price. They do it better than anybody else for a lot less money. It's just the main question is, if you have this kind of money in the executive class, how many people at this point in time are gonna choose a Genesis over an Audi, a BMW, the LS? I mean, I just don't get it. It's tough. I admire Genesis for attempting to break into a new segment and really deliver a good car. I just see it struggling, to be honest. That said, given sort of the Lex, sorry, the uh, Genesis, Kia, Hyundai problem of depreciation, in one or two years after this thing's been on the road for a little while, these have to be an amazing buy at say like thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, the G80, which I've considered buying until I got screwed over by a Hyundai dealership, you know, you could get a G8, G80 Ultimate with a 5 liter for, you know, 35,000 with low miles. And this is not that cheap, but, you know, there is the depreciation side. From a new car perspective, that's not a good thing for the brand either. They're, they got to figure out how to keep, get the residuals up. But again, this is a value luxury car product. And if you understand that going in, then you're probably gonna love this. Obje objectively driving it, yes, it's an isolation chamber. It's not that exciting, but honestly, you're, you're not looking for that in a car like this. If you want a total cruiser that rides well, gets reasonable gas mileage, is extremely quiet and comfortable, you know, it's hard to fault this. That's a good time to get into the final thoughts where we're gonna sum all of this up. Final thoughts on the Genesis G90. I'm going to go right into the pros and cons. The pros are this. You get a lot for your money. You do. And you get more simplicity than any of the other manufacturers at this price range. Their focus wasn't trying to make everything so complicated mechanically that it's going to cost you an insane amount of money to fix things, including when you get in an accident, you don't have a 60 radar sensors and ultrasound sensors and all of that, while they still give you most of the tech that you want. The interior design 
not aesthetically, but the interior design overall is ultra isolated. It's high quality, the fit and finish is good. And the Lexicon audio system, the, it's the only audio system that you get in here, tests better than any bass audio system we've ever looked at. The harmonic distortion is the only iffy spot. There's a little bit of spikage near the mid-range to upper mid-range, but if you look at the overall frequency response, it is as good as you're gonna get. It plays well at high volumes. You're really gonna enjoy this and you don't have to pay extra for it. It's just built into the cost of the product. And for a vehicle of this size, amazing. Now, the ride quality is great. It rides super soft. This is all about softness and plushness and quietness. The exterior styling, I'm not going to say much about it. It is polarizing, but it, it, they're trying to inject some character in it and flair of their own design. It's no longer such a copy and paste job like it used to be. Now, the negatives are this. For a ultra luxury product, and I said this during the drive, they do not have a trim level or the extra features that you would want, like air fresheners, the massaging seat options, uh, crazy LED lighting, the electronic package isn't as good as what you're getting in the German competitors. So while the simplicity is a good thing, if you're really looking for that ultra high-end product, it's not there yet. But again, this is a last generation car. They've refreshed the G90 from what it was originally, and all that money went on the interior space and the exterior sheet metal restyling. But underneath, the core is all pretty much the same as it was, which was a great foundation. I would, I have high hopes for Genesis as a brand, but I think they're gonna face two things. One, resale value, residual value is pitiful still. I talked about this with the G80 when it came out. And the second part of that, it has no prestige yet. It just does not have a high prestige value compared to the competitive luxury products, and it's still new, it's gonna take time, but the path they're on, I love it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.